On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we have an update on the research vessel Petrol. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So yesterday we discussed the fact that research vessel Petrol rolled over in a dry dock in Leith, Scotland. And two quick corrections to my video from yesterday. Number one, it's in Leith, Scotland, not in Edinburgh, Scotland. And second, it's Edinburgh, Scotland, not Edinburgh, Scotland. Because when you say Edinburgh instead of Edinburgh, you hear from lots of Scots. Today I want to give you an update on those who were injured, an update on the vessel. Uh, we'll talk about the ownership one more time about the vessel because there's still some question about that. We'll talk about how this potentially happened and how they'll go about salvaging the vessel. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this story. So I had an opportunity to talk about this story on two occasions, one last night with uh, Fourth Radio and the other today, this morning, with Scotland TV. According to Scotland TV, uh, five remain in hospital out of 35. So good news is they're releasing people. This type of accident where a ship rolls in a dry dock can be catastrophic, especially if you're caught in the dry dock and the vessel rolls onto you. Uh, other injuries are usually caused by people high up on the rigging or in scaffolding getting thrown off, and people within the ship not just getting thrown when the ship rolls, but loose items hitting them. So very good news that casualties are coming down. All right, a couple of information about the petrol itself because uh, I received some notes that I was talking about the wrong ship, that this is not the ship. So one of the things, the way you track vessels, this is marine traffic. This tracks the AIS of the ship. You'll see the ship right here, the imagery. You'll see it's located in Edinburgh. And then as you go down here, you will also find information about the vessel. And particularly right here, this is the ship's IMO number. That is a unique number given to it by the International Maritime organization. Here's the dry dock in Leith. Uh, you, do, you don't see petrol squawking her AIS here, but here's Scotia. This is the uh, vessel that is just astern of her in the dry dock in Leith. So with the ship's name and the IMO number, you can track it. And this is from Lloyd's Register, which is the classification society for petrol. So you can see the year of the build, 2003, the flag of registry, Isle of Man, and the owner. And that owner, NAVFAC uh, EXWC at Port Wyneme, California, that is the Navy Facilities Engineering and Expeditionary Warfare Center. This is a subset of the Naval Sea Systems Command of the U.S. Navy. This agency in particular, and what we think this vessel is going to be doing, is in a role very similar to a ship just recently purchased by the Royal Navy, the Topaz uh, Tangaora. This vessel, an offshore support vessel, was purchased by the UK's Ministry of Defense for conversion into a multi-role ocean surveillance vessel. She's being converted over a Camel Laird uh, and will be renamed RFA Proteus. And it's being dedicated to safeguard critical seabed infrastructure, act as a mothership operating remote and autonomous offboard systems, underwater and for naval warfare. The US Navy operates very similar vessels through the Naval Sea Systems Command for uh, US submarines, for special operations uh, with Navy SEALs, and for monitoring cables and pipelines so that you can prevent issues like a potential Nord Stream attack. This is petrol in better days, obviously. So you see she follows a very much that similar form line that you saw in the potential future RFA vessel. But here's some images that we have gotten of the vessel in the dry dock in Leith. So there she is rolled on her starboard side up against the dry dock. And uh, you can envision why this is so cataclysmic when it happened, uh, a vast roll. She's rolled about 30 degrees to the starboard side there and you can see Scotia just in front of her. So a couple of things to note. This dry dock in Leith, uh, they do not fully support the vessel underneath the dry dock with blocks and braces. Instead, they use shoring material here, shoring braces, to brace the vessel up along the side. So here you see Scotia, and here you can see those shoring braces. So when there's water in the dry dock, you bring both these vessels in the dry dock at the same time. You put down a row of wooden blocks to support the keel, and then you put the shoring braces in, and you can see 
them right here. What that allows you to do is push against the hull and the side of the dry dock and you hold the vessel in place. And the reason you do this is a couple of reasons. Number one, it is quicker. It's a lot faster. You don't have to put as many blocks underneath it. There's less potential for damage of the hull by resting on top of these wooden blocks. If you don't position those blocks just perfectly right, you can press up through the hull and potentially damage the hull. Uh, second, it's a lot faster. You don't have to put as many blocks down, which means you can bring the vessels in and out a lot faster. And third, it's cheaper. It's just cheaper to do this. The problem is, should these braces fail, should you have a failure of the braces, then you're not gonna be able to keep on center line. So here's Petrel from above, looking at her port side, she's uh, laying on her starboard side. So a couple of things uh, you can kind of uh, identify here. So number one, you'll see this netting here, the gangway was right here, and in a future picture you'll see the gangway on the ground. This is where the gangway was, the netting was underneath it. The ship is laying on a row of blocks right down the center line. You can see the ship's keel here, the stern skeg right here, and the ship is pretty flat bottom, which means it's really conducive of the putting these wooden blocks here along. And then you can see the braces, some of the braces hanging from ropes here. What's interesting is you don't see any braces hanging from ropes down toward the after side. And so there's a question about where are all those braces that were up against the vessel. This image is probably the most interesting uh, that I've seen. So here she is laying on her starboard side. Uh, you'll see the vessel is fitted with twin azipod engines. In other words, there's no rudder on the ship. The uh, sh ship's engines or the propellers actually in 360 degrees. And so with the bow thrusters and the twin azipods on the stern, it can maintain its position. Down here, you can see the blocks it's resting on. Here's the uh, keel of the vessel and it's laying on top of those blocks. There's the gangway that was attached up here with the netting. And the ship has rolled to her starboard side. So what causes this situation to happen? Well, if the braces fail, if you have a failure of one or two of the braces, you can have a domino effect where the braces begin to fail altogether and that will cause the ship to roll. And what causes that? Well, you can have improper placement. Uh, you may not have enough braces to hold the ship in place. Uh, there was reports of really high wind that day. The ship has a large surface area. That surface area may have pushed enough to either f cause the braces on the starboard side, the right side of the vessel, the part you can't see, to fail, or to push the ship just enough to starboard to weaken the port braces that the port braces gave way. But more than likely because of the way she rolled, she probably rolled because of a failure on the starboard braces. Either there wasn't enough, uh, they weren't properly locked in, we don't know. This is all su supposition at this point. We just don't know what happened. But usually what you would have in other dry docks, and again, this is a fairly typical way to dry dock. This is not unusual at all. But you'll see that the very pronounced stern of the vessel, the curve here of the vessel, the hull form, really makes it difficult to build up blocks and braces underneath that hull, that entire hull form. And so to kind of get away with it really quick, you use this method, which again is used worldwide. It is not unusual at all to happen. Uh, for getting this vessel out, you have a couple of options here. Obviously, one of the things you can do is bring in cranes and try to lift her up straight and then block and brace her again into the upright position. Uh, you can try to push off from the starboard side, the right side of the dry dock there, and push the vessel back into place while bracing it. The problem you have is as you lift that vessel, you have to make sure that you're bracing on the port side. What I think they'll probably do, because the, uh, the water line, the way this ship is, and when you look at the images of the ship, because this ship appears to be, uh, the, the hull form is largely above the side of the dry dock, uh, what they will probably do is seal all the portholes, the openings of the vessels, hatches, anything like that, and they will slowly flood the dry dock and try to right the vessel up. Now, they'll have to ensure the ship doesn't slip off the blocks and fall into the bottom of the dry dock. So they're going to have to secure the vessel, make sure that as the water rises, she comes up off the block and then center lines. But that will probably be the quickest and easiest way, flooding the dry dock and bringing her up onto an even keel. Uh, 
remember, she is brought into this dry dock along with Scotia behind her. And what they are brought in, they are higher than the bottom of the dry dock. So those, those blocks are placed in prior to the dry dock flooding. They bring them in. Then they will pump out the dry dock, lower it down. So what they'll probably wind up doing is just slowly flood the dry dock. And then as the vessel gets ready to come loose, they'll secure it, make sure it doesn't move off the dry dock until they have enough buoyancy to get it up off the blocks and right it and then bring it out. So a lot going on regarding this vessel. Uh, again, this vessel was being converted and a little bit of a question about why in Scotland, the ship has been laid up. So not unusual that the contract, which was brokered by the U.S. Navy, would use a foreign dry dock. No reason to bring her to the United States to get the vessel repaired. She's in the British Isles, so she went up to Scotland to get this done. Facilities are there. She, she's registered in the Isle of Man. Whether the ship will be reflagged, that's another issue. She will probably be reflagged to the United States since she'll be operating under a U.S. Navy contract. It doesn't have to be U.S. built. The ship was actually built in Romania. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, subscribe. Hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment. Share it across social media. Give it a thumbs up. And if you have some information that you want to share, and if I've mispronounced anything, be sure to let me know. Uh, again, thinking about everybody who's been hurt in, uh, in this incident, hoping to see them all get out of hospital as soon as possible. If you can, support the page. How do you do that? You can hit that super thanks button down below, which allows you to contribute directly to the page, or head on over to Patreon. Become a patron of the page. You can become a weekly or monthly patron. Until our next video, this is Sal signing off.